Una guitarra. You know, just see. You want that? Now I'm. Now am I audible? Audible? Okay. So it's really an really an honor for me to talk in this occasion. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizer, especially Narayan sir, for giving me this opportunity to speak here. So as the title shows, so I will talk about extension problems and fractional Hardy type inequalities, mainly for Einstein Uhlenbeck operator. And uh, Hermit operator will play a crucial role in getting various things done. So to begin with, let us see what is Hardy inequality. So more than 100 years ago, G. H. Hardy came up with this inequality, which says if given a non-negative measurable function f on the open interval zero infinity, this inequality holds. This is not working. Oh. Okay. Okay. So what Hardy proved is that whenever f is a non-negative measurable function on the half line, this inequality holds, and whenever the right hand side of the integral is finite. Now to make it more mathematically appealing, let us refresh this inequality in a different form. So let us write u x to be this function integration over zero to x f t dt. Then the above inequality transform into this form. Now this has more mathematical beauty because here you control the weighted LP norm of U with respect to the inverse weights with the uh, that is controlled by the derivative of that function. Now to make life simple, we will only consider the P equals to two case in this talk. So a natural generali generalization of this inequality in the n dimensional case when n is bigger or equals to three and P equals to three to re read as this. And this is true for every f belongs to the compactly supported smooth function, and then we can take the uh, user density argument to uh, to prove this inequality for a bigger class, where where this uh, c c not infinity is dense. Now, now this uh, gradient term can be replaced by a Laplacian term in usual way, so that this uh, higher dimensional inequality takes this form here, and we also know that this uh, constant is sharp, this constant is sharp, but the equality is never achieved. I mean, for non-trivial functions, but for f, f equals to zero, this is definitely achieved. Now, what is the physical applications of this uh, Hardy inequality? So if you consider the Schrodinger operator, this is just the Laplacian with a, a potential term with inverse squares pot uh, potential term. So a natural question is, when is this operator positive in the Hilbert space L2 Rn? The answer is exactly the Hardy inequality. So this and also the sharpness of this constant also gives us that if C is bigger than this constant, Hardy constant, then the operator is not positive. Now, by looking at this inequality, it is natural to ask whether we can generalize this inequality to the fractional parts of the Laplacian. So here is the one. So this is true for every s between 0 and n by 2, then this inequality holds. So this is called the fractional power, fractional Hardy inequality. And also here this constant is sharp and the proof of that the constant is sharp and the equality is not achieved for a class of functions for which both sides are finite. There are a lot of proofs by Beckner and others. Recently in 2008, Frank and his collaborator used a ground state representation of this fractional power of the Laplacian to give a better proof, better in the sense that the, they gave better bound on the error term. And also, if we replace this uh, homogeneous weight, homogeneous weight by a non-homogeneous weight, we have another Hardy type inequality. Another Hardy type inequality, which reads as this. So here, the weight is replaced by something like rho square plus mod x square to the power s. Now, unlike the homogeneous case, in the non-homogeneous case, the constant is all, uh, the equality is achieved for functions of this form, and the constant is also sharp. And also there are so many applications of this uh, non-homogeneous Hardy inequality, which I will present in my case. So after this kind of works on, there has been a lot of work in this direction, but it is hard for me to uh, talk about everyone's work. So I will just mention three most influential work in this direction. The first one by Frank Lee and Singer, where they proved the 
hardy fractional hardy inequality with the ground state representation then the works of uh, ronkal and thangavelu where they considered the fractional power of sub laplacian on the heisenberg group so first they prove it uh, in this paper they considered the ground state representation and in this paper they proved using the extension problem and trace at inequality so there so as we we can, we can see there has been a lot of work but not much was done in the gaussian harmonic analysis setting uh, or the operators having discrete spectrum so we took that opportunity and we proved uh, hardy fractional hardy type inequality for the ornstein ullenbeck operator so which is a joint work with r manna and s thangavelu so the rest of the talk we will uh, will be based on this paper so now let us start with what is gaussian harmonic analysis so unlike the euclidean classical harmonic analysis in the gaussian harmonic analysis it is formulated using this gaussian measure and the frame of reference that is everything will be done in the probability space rn brn is basically the borel sigma algebra and d gamma basically is this gaussian measure and that's the normalizing constant that's not a matter now the role of the laplacian in this gaussian context is placed is played by this operator which is known as the ornstein ullenbeck operator this is just the laplacian plus this gradient term now there has been a lot of activities in this direction of gaussian harmonic analysis like developing the theory of calderon jigmand and all these things so interested reader can uh, look at this book by urvina it's a very well written book on this gaussian harmonic analysis now the thing is why do we care about this operator of course everybody has their own reason but anyway i would like to point out some uh, some points so first of all ornstein ullenbeck operators appears as a infinitesimal generators of the ornstein ullenbeck process which is basically a stochastic process with applications in uh, fine financial mathematics and physical sciences and many more areas of science also this uh, ornstein ullenbeck operator plays a crucial role in maliavin calculus which is actually a analysis in infinite dimensional setting and the ornstein ullenbeck operator is considered as the generalization of laplacian in infinite dimensional setting actually maliavin calculus was uh, developed to study the regularity of stochastic differential equations also this uh, ornstein ullenbeck operator is a prototype for a bigger picture that is laplacian on weighted riemannian manifolds so whatever things we will be doing today one can ask this kind of things on a more general picture of laplace beltrami on weighted riemannian manifolds so for a detailed account of weighted riemannian manifold one can look at this very well written book of gregorian okay so now let us uh, talk more about the operator ornstein ullenbeck so this uh, unlike the euclidean case where the laplacian is just sum of squares of the vector fields here we have a somewhat similar representation del j star del j where del j is the usual vector field and del j star is the adjoint of that usual vector field on l2 gamma l2 gamma is basically the l2 rn with that measure d gamma so this will be helpful for our purpose and we have a so nice so spectral can you go back to the so yes. can you go back to the yes one other i just finish Okay, this L is called the uh, Ornstein ullenbeck. Okay. Should I okay. add? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in this Gaussian setting, we have a natural family of orthogonal functions which are given by Hermit polynomials. So in the one-dimensional case, the Hermit polynomials are defined by these. You take the Gaussian, apply the derivatives, then you multiply with the same Gaussian so that you only get the polynomial part. now we don't uh, and the n dimensional hermit polynomials are defined just by taking the tensor product of one dimensional polynomial we multiply a constant c alpha so that uh, that becomes normalized in the l2 norm and then this uh, this turns out that this uh, hermit polynomials forms a orthonormal basis for l2 gamma and they are eigen functions of the ornstein ullenbeck operator with eigen value 2 mod alpha so zero is in the spectrum so and the spectral decomposition for this uh, ornstein ullenbeck operator reads as this where qkf is basically the uh, projection of f onto the eigen space uh, with eigen value 2k now for our purpose it is convenient to work with this operator i am just adding a n here 
because in some uh, because in some applications or some cases we have to consider negative power of the operator so if zero is there in the spectrum we will be in trouble so we will add n here now adding n adds more beauty to the operator now it be, it related to the hermit operator so if you just calculate just simple calculation just take f multiply with e power mod x square by 2 apply the einstein ulenbeck e power thing will come out and what you left with is just the hermit operator so using this relation we will uh, so to make the relations of hermit, hermit operator and einstein ulenbeck operator more precise we use this notation gamma x so from now on gamma x will denote this uh, function gaussian and m gamma x is a m gamma is the operator that takes f to gamma x power half multiplied with f that's a just a multiplication operator which is bounded on l2 l2 gamma so with this operator we have a nice connection of l and h l is the uh, uh, onstein lenbeck operator with a plus n so this is the connection you you apply m gamma then l then m gamma inverse that will land you in hermit operator so the projections for the hermit operator will denote it by pk so this is actually the orthogonal projection of l2 rn the usual hilbert space onto the finite dimensional eigen space corresponding to the eigen value 2k plus 1 and we have this spectral decomposition so now it's uh, usual to define the fractional powers of these operators using this spectral decomposition as this so you just simply put uh, 2k plus n to the power s in the spectrum side and that's your operator so 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 all these series are understood in the l2 sense convergence in the l2 sense now uh, here we will be using a different kind of fractional power so the motivation for that comes from the heisenberg group so it would have been a crime if i don't talk about heisenberg group today so here it is so we consider this heisenberg group hn cn cross r equipped with this group law where in the first variable it is just the addition and in the second variable along with the addition there is a twisting term which is a symplectic form on r to n and which makes this group a non commutative group and it is known to be a simple step to nilpotent lie group where the lebesgue measure dz dc plays the role of r measure and the group fourier transform of an integrable function is an operator valued function defined on the non zero reals it is defined by integrating the function with respect to the schrodinger uh, schrodinger representation p lambda which is a bounded operator from l to rn to l to rn and the uh, sub laplacian on the heisenberg group is defined as the sum of squares of all the heisenberg vector fields this is the first 2n vector fields so this is a sub elliptic operator and the sub laplacian and the hermit operator are connected by this relation if you take a function apply sub laplacian then take the operator valued fourier transform it will give you the fourier transform of f times h lambda h lambda is the scaled hermit operator so exactly similar to the euclidean situation here i have written now the usual fractional powers of the sub laplacian is defined as this since the for the euclidean case we can simply put 2s here we can define the fractional power using the fourier transform like in the in the heisenberg setting also we can define the usual fractional power as this where f lambda is multiplied with f lambda applied to h lambda to the power s and h lambda to the power s is the usual power that we have already defined now so the now there is another fractional power which is called the conformal fractional powers l sub s which is actually motivated from scattering theory and the conformal geometry of cr sphere which is defined in this form as uh, if we take the fourier transform that will turns out to be this so now taking analogy from these things so the so another candidate for the fractional power of h lambda will be this red thing thing and since we have a fractional power for the, for, for the h lambda now we can use the relation of h and l so that we can define another candidate for a fractional power of the einstein ulenbeck operator as this now the main crux of the matter is when we consider this kind of fractional power you are geometrically in a better position so okay now considering this fractional power is not uh, uh, is not harmful because so we can use the starling formula to show that the ratio of this to gamma function actually asymptotically equals to 2k plus n to the power s so we are not losing anything and l power s and l sub s are equivalent in the sense that there is a bounded operator 
that connects ls and l subs so that if we can have an inequality for l subs we can just uh, uh, deduce another inequality same same inequality for l power s also along with l we will also consider consider another operator half l so this is absolutely harmful because harmless because uh, us u sub s and l sub s has uh, norm which are comparable so this is for just uh, to make some calculations uh, nice okay so i'll just go to the uh, our approach or the overview of the talk so this is what we want to prove a fractional hardy type inequality for this operator us so this is a fractional hardy type inequality of this form where cns will be explicit and we have, we will be considering the non homogeneous weight and our approach is to use trace hardy inequality of this form where u is a a uh, real valued function in from a suitable space and gradient u is some gradient we will define it later and that will be done by studying an extension problem for u so so that's our that's sort of the overview of or the approach of our talk so now we i will start with an brief introduction to extension problems so <clears throat> given zero uh, given s between 0 and 1 and l be a non negative densely defined self adjoint operator on l2 m mu where a means some space that will be made clear later the ex by an extension problem for l we will mean this initial value problem where the fx is the initial condition and this is the extension operator for l now the main advantage of this extension problem is that we can map the dirichlet data to the neumann data and we get the fractional power the fractional power of the usual fractional power of the operator l can be realized as a map from the dirichlet to the neumann data so the another advantage is that here we are characterizing a non local pd non local operator by a local degenerate pd so that will be very helpful in our study so so this was first uh, this uh, characterization of uh, uh, non local thing by a local thing is what's first uh, observed by caffarelli and silvestre in 2007 so ever since caffarelli silvestre studied this problem this problems got a huge hype in the among pd and harmonic analysis people then uh, in 2010 stinga toria revisited this and and prove a general uh, they consider m to be a general open set of rn and this prove the whole result that is this kind of things for a general second order differential operator but since uh, here the problem is if you use this uh, extension problem you will get the usual fractional power so but we will be considering a different fractional power for that we have to consider uh, we have to modify this extension problem suitably so we will consider this extension problem so here up to this much is as in the caffarelli silvestre now we have to add this new term minus 1 by 4 rho square so this is our extension problem for u i will the stock up i will just show that this is the correct extension problem and this will give us the the fractional power we are interested in so using the the connection between u and the our operator hermit operator h one can show that if u solves the above equation then vx ro which is defined by applying m gamma to u x rho that is you multiply with gamma to gamma x to the power half then that will solve the extension problem this kind of extension problem for the hermit operator so with this connections whatever result i am going to state for the einstein lorentzberg operator everything can be proved in the setting of hermit operator so and these two are all i have already shown this hermit is connected to the heisen sub laplacian on the heisenberg group so a solution of this we will show which is uh, directly deduced from the solution of the extension problem for the sub laplacian on the heisenberg group so this is the modified extension problem for the sub laplacian on the heisenberg group that is supposed to give you the conformal fractional power so that was studied by various people frank molars molar orsted and then ronkel thangavelu so this is the fractional power uh, so this is the extension problem and the solution of this ex a solution of this extension problem is given by this you take the heisenberg convolution with f and capital f s rho so f s rho is given by this thing of course this has some very geometric very nice geometric meaning but i am not going into that 
So with this function, Fs rho and the connection between Hermit, Einstein, Lorentz, and Sub-Laplacian, we can show that given a L2 function, L2 gamma. Suppose uh, V x rho is defined by this equation, where we are integrating over the Heisenberg group. We are taking this, and pi is just the uh, Schrodinger representation of with lambda equals to one. Then this uh, extension problem solve for the Hermite operator with initial condition m gamma f, and consequently, if we take U x rho to be you now, if we multiply the Gaussian with V x rho, that will solve the extension problem for U. So that uh, so now we have one solution for the extension problem when the initial condition is in L2. Now, if you want to forget about the Heisenberg group, just forget it. Now I will give you another solution which is uh, more interesting, which involves the heat kernel and all that. So we let uh, K T S rho be the heat kernel for this. The rest of the part in the sorry, rest of the part in the extension operator. That is the heat kernel. It is explicitly known to be this sine hyperbolic t to the power minus s minus one times e power minus e power minus one by four cot hyperbolic t times rho square. Then it turns out that if you take that heat kernel and multiply with the heat semigroup associated with the operator u, and you take the integration with respect to t, then that will solve the extension problem whenever f is in L P. And the initial condition is satisfied in this sense that if rho tends to zero, then u x rho converges to f in L p. It is true for any p between one and infinity. So that's a more natural solution, and we can actually calculate these two solutions, this one and this one, and this one and that one, and show that these two solutions are same. So, so this uh, since these expressions are explicit, we can just calculate this integral, and that turns out to be this. If f is in L2, then the solution exactly looks like this in the spectral form, where this coefficient is given by an L function, which is defined by this relation. So if you take a b to be positive and c from R, then a l a b c is defined by this integral, and the solution turns out to be this, where the coefficient are the given by the L function. So from now on, we will call this the extension operator T s rho applied to f to be this. Now we have this theorem. So if S is between zero and one, and F is from L2 intersection LP, then the you take you take the rho derivative, multiply with rho power one minus two S, then that will actually give you the fractional power we are interested in. So that's the, just the constant, and modulo a constant that will give us the fractional power we are interested in. So. This much is needed to study the Hardy inequality. Now I will take a slight detour and talk about talk more about the extension problem. We will talk about the general solution of the extension problem we are considering. So this is the extension problem. So now in Euclidean case, how you solve? You take the Fourier transform, you reduce it to a ODE, solve the ODE. Now you go back. Here we will do similar things, but in the discrete setting. Instead of Fourier transform, we will use Fourier Hermite coefficients, which are defined by this. You take the Integral of the function with respect to Hermite polynomial and integration with the Gaussian measure. So now, if you apply this Fourier Hermite coefficient to this operator and make a slight change of variable, you put rho in place of rho, you take two rho, two rho, root rho. Then the above equation transform into in this form. Now we will make further change of variable so that we get a known ODE. So again, if if I take this kind of change of variable. Transformation that will this OD will transfer to this OD. Now this is actually a well-known OD. It is called Kamar's equation, and we can so there is a way to go from Kamar's equation to another very nice equation, which is called Whittaker equation. So we will do that. So it's not visible. So we will again use this change of variable where mu is 2k plus n by 2. So mu is s by 2 and kappa is 2k plus n by 2. Then that O D will transfer into this O D, and that is called the Whittaker equation. And the solution of Whittaker equation is well known. These are two. There are two linearly independent solution of this uh, Whittaker equation. These are called Whittaker functions, m kappa mu and w k kappa mu. They are given by this hypergeometric series. And the asymptotics are of these two functions are uh, almost explicitly known. So this will be helpful for to get the solution. 
Now, if you go back, just like in the Euclidean case, you apply inverse Fourier Hermit coefficients, then you will get this. So u alpha rho will be given by this. The u are the solution of u alpha rho will be given by this. Now we have to go back. Now this motivates us to define two operators. So for any distribution f such that m gamma f is tempered, so we define s1 rho fx that is from the first thing, and using the initial value that it is f. And the asymptotic properties of this uh, Whittaker function, one can explicitly calculate C1 alpha, which turns out to be this gamma function by gamma s. And so this motivates us to define this thing. And this converges because we have uh, taken m gamma f to be tempered, so that this series converges. And for any other and another function g for which q g that is the uh, a Gaussian projection has enough decay as a function of k. We define the another thing that is coming from this thing. Another operator S2 rho g, which is this series defined in terms of the spectral projections. So with these two operators, we have our first characterization. So it says if f is a distribution such that m gamma f is tempered, then for any function ux rho such that m gamma ux rho is tempered in x only, Solution of the extension problem with initial condition f is this u will be a solution of the extension problem with initial condition f if and only if u is of this form s1 rho f plus s2 rho g for some g coming from this uh, space h2 gamma t h2 gamma t is not visible here is is basically the image of l2 gamma under the under the Poisson semigroup with respect to the Einstein Lorenzberg operator so this is the semigroup e to the power minus t times l to the power half. So that this uh, Q K G has enough decay, so that this uh, S rho two G makes sense. Also, we can we can have a further generalization of uh, further characterization of this theorem. So, if we just uh, uh, impose another condition on the solution, that is, if it is uniform, the LP norm of the solution is uniformly bounded with respect to rho, then the solution turns out to be only the first operator S one rho f. The second operator will not play any role in this case because of this condition. Also, we have a, a characterization of the solution in terms of the holomorphic extendability of the solution. To state that, I need some more notation. That is, we will consider this new weighted Bachmann space. So, given t and delta positive, we consider this weight w delta x y, which is uh, not completely explicit but looks nice. So we consider this uh, weighted Bartman space H2 omega rho W rho to the power 2 s that is the weight and omega rho is basically the uh, tube in the complex domain. And the Bartman space consists of all holomorphic functions in the complex domain which are which belong to this weighted L2 space. And we define the uh, Sobolov space Hermit Sobolov space which is uh, basically a Hilbert space and the norm of these hermit Sobolov spaces are given by this. Now with these two notations, we have this characterization the, that a solution of the extension problem of this form that is with the first operator only for some distribution f such that m gamma f is, a, is in this Sobolov space, negative Sobolov space where mn is given explicitly by this minus 2n plus 1 by 4. And that is if and only for every row bigger than 0 m gamma rho extends holomorphically to this tube domain omega rho by 2 and they satisfies this way uniform estimate that is there in the uh, weighted Bachmann space. So this completes our characterization for the solution of the extension problem. Now we will use a particular solution of the extension problem to go prove a trace study and from there we will deduce a Hardy type inequality. Okay, so to state the trace Hardy inequality, we will work with this gradient on Rn cross the half line. I am just uh, normalizing it in a suitable sense, just multiplying 1 by root 2 to every vector field. And this is the our general trace Hardy inequality, which says if S is between 0 and 1, and phi is an L2 function such that, which is in the domain of the fractional power of u, such that phi inverse us phi is locally integrable so that this integral makes sense then for any real valued function ux rho coming from this space so we can actually take uh, smooth functions that doesn't matter 
uh, then we have this inequality where in the blue thing it is called the trace norm actually we can define it as a norm and take the space which is the completion of this kind of uh, space smooth functions in this norm and this the inequality will still be hold holds true in that bigger space now how to prove this thing i will just give a sketch of proof so from in what follows we will call this the extension operator ts delta x del rho and we use this magical identity so you take this you consider this and now you expand this square expand this square and use that delta j star is the adjoint of delta and use some integration by parts to get this so this is the magical identity we will be using now there is no condition on u and v u and v just some nice functions that is uh, uh, in the row variable it is compactly supported and in the x variable it is just bounded and smooth that's all we don't need any other condition so we will we have this kind of thing now this should hint us what we have to assume on v so this is exactly the extension thing and this is the fractional power thing so we will just take vx to be the solution of the extension problem with of u and with initial condition phi x so v solves the extension problem that is this part is zero and from and since it, it is it solves the extension problem so this uh, dirichlet to neumann data will give us the fractional power so all together we are getting this inequality so that proves the tracery inequality but here we have not used any assumption on u u is just a, a real valued function on that a uh, smooth space now we can further use the uh, magical identity and get a better a better representation for this uh, trace norm so you again go back to this uh, magical identity so remember magical this magical identity has nothing to do with our trace id inequality so again you, we we use this and we take v and u to be equal and they are solving the extension problem with initial condition some another function phi f then this part will be zero this part will survive this part will be zero so this part will be equals to the part involving the fractional power so we will get this get this if you take that u solves the extension problem with the initial condition f now we already have this inequality from the trace id inequality now we have a better representation for the trace norm so with these two things we have this i think there is a typo there is a typo it should be it should not be square here it is fx times usf x so with these two things as a corollary we get this that if f is l2 such that the fractional power applied to f is in l2 then we have this inequality this is the hardy inequality for the fractional power now what we have to do is we have to sim choose some phi from the domain of us such that this us rho by phi sorry us phi by e phi simplifies and give us what i what is required so that's our aim that's the aim for the rest of the talk so now uh, we can take phi to be this weird function so it is written in terms of the lagor polynomial and uh, okay so i can write it as the lagor function so the ln by 2 minus 1 is a lagor polynomial of degree k of type n by 2 minus 1 and it I, i have taken the coefficients to be the l function that we have already defined now this turns out to be that uh, we can re re rewrite this phi s row in terms of the spectral projections by defining suitable functions so then we have this uh, intertwining thing that if s is belongs to minus 1 to 1 and then us applied to phi s minus row will land you in some constant times phi s row so now you can easily guess what is going to be our phi so also this phi s row can be calculated explicitly with some formulas and they turns out to be in terms of uh, macdonald functions which is defined by this integral and the here the constant is also explicit so now to give a sketch of proof we will just take phi to be phi minus s row and now if you look at phi s phi by us phi by phi that is using the first intertwining thing that will be the constant times phi s row by phi minus s row now again if we we can simplify this phi s row by my phi minus s row in terms of macdonald functions 
so this will turns out to be this now here we have already the we already have the non homogeneous weight and so we will call this uh, ws rho plus mod x square as this weight this ratio of uh, macdonald function and with this consideration we have this uh, hardy inequality for us it says if f is from l2 such that the fractional power applied to f is in l2 then for every row bigger than 0 we have this uh, fractional hardy inequality for the onsen ullenbeck operator u at uh, the constant this constant is sharp and the equality is attained so you can already see the equality is attained for uh, f equals to phi minus s rho so this inequality is sharp but we have an extra weight ws but this is bigger or equals to 1 so we can use that wst is bigger or equals to 1 and we get this inequality that is what we are expecting but we don't know anything about this constant whether it is sharp or not so yeah it exactly analogous to the euclidean constant but still we don't know whether it is sharp or one sharp, sharp or not now since us ls and hs everything is connected we can deduce another similar inequality for the ls then we can also deduce similar inequality for the usual fractional power and also using the uh, relation between this onstein ullenbeck and hermit operator we can deduce a hard inequality for the fractional power of hermit operator which was previously obtained by oscar ronkal and thangavelu in 2018 so this reads as this so this comes as a corollary from our result now this uh, uh, this uh, fractional uh, fractional inequality with respect to the non homogeneous weight has some nice applications so if you simply take this you take the l2 norm of f you multiply with these two weights rho plus mod x square plus s times rho plus mod x square to the power minus s by 2 then you apply the cauchy schwarz inequality you will get this inequality now this part is uh, this part is controlled by the hardy thing this part can be uh, represented differently using the hardy inequality now if we do that then we will get this heisenberg type uncertainty principle which says if f is l2 function such that us f is in l2 that is f is in th- the f is in the domain of us this the, these two quantity is controlled by this constant that is uh, these two quantity the us f f inner product of us f and f and this weighted norms are cannot be sharply localized so this is called the heisenberg uncertainty principle for the fractional power us so okay so i think that's all i have to say for the mathematical part now i will just uh, finish this talk with the last slide which is dedicated to sangavelu sir so i will not say a very happy retirement or something like that because i know i actually i believe he cannot retire from mathematics so thank you uh, any questions we have some time for the next talk so any questions from the online audience uh you where is this picture taken <laughs> okay metagliflur metagliflur okay <laughs> so that's very recent yeah okay think 2000 2018 any other questions so if not let's uh, thank the speaker once again so we'll meet for the next talk at 12 Stop recording. Oh.